Hey, let's talk about games. Good afternoon my friend, you're listening to Hydra and today I'm going to be talking about Martyr again. Now, today's going to be a little bit more of some, some real talk for you. We're going to be talking about the 58% of people that have thumbed up Martyr, which unfortunately means 42% have thumbed down. Now. I do think rightly so, but this video isn't just to rattle off what the game's currently doing badly, because I think that's very easy to do right now. It's easy to pick holes in it. What I'd like to do is try and put a positive spin on it, and perhaps use this video to give a little bit of feedback and direction, because over the next year, over the next month, over the next week, whenever, the developers have got some work to do to turn this into a workable, enjoyable shining example of a 40k game now some of the pessimists out there may say that's never going to happen and i have no idea if it will or won't but i do know that if they have a little bit more direction and if there's enough feedback and some good quality feedback it may well help and may well lead to a better sort of experience it's also worth considering that the old console launch is going to be coming fairly soon in a month and anything that can be done to give those guys a smoother ride to start off with I'd like to see it anyway, because I like to see games succeed, I don't revel in their failure, and I would like to see this game make some steps in the right direction. So, without any further ado, what I'm going to be talking about now are a few of my ideas with what's really going wrong at the moment, and what's um, sort of hemorrhaging players, what could be done to fix this. And do bear in mind guys, this is just my personal thoughts, but I'd love to see yours down in the comments below. If you, if you agree with me or disagree with me, fair enough, pick me up on the points and we'll go from there. So. Let's start off with number one. One of the biggest problems with this game, and this is one I personally bypassed thanks to the ridiculous meme virus, is the post-story levelling bump. Let's call it a levelling bump. You go through the game and you have, I would say, a 15-20 hour narrative experience, and this is assuming you listen to the actual narrative and read it. Then after that, you are met with a brick wall of content, which is more or less, let's take three or five story missions take away all the narrative and add a couple of object objectives and then keep replaying that for the next 100 200 missions or so that basically will get you from level 25 to 40. granted there's been a small buff since i went through this the first time but it is exceptionally slow compared to the story leveling and to compound this issue, to compound the change in pace, which goes from fairly quick with story, fairly quick, to, ouch, this has got a lot slower, um, is, is the repetition and lack of reward. So the repetition's obviously one thing, lack of variety in the open world. I'm not sure if it's a bug, but I played the same four maps, exactly the same four, for two weeks. Um, no variation, different enemies sometimes, but normally exact same spawn point, exact same enemy spawn point, Everything was the same for two weeks, four maps. That's all I had. Um, I do think that was a bug in terms of the generator, but if a bug like that exists, good Lord, that's not good. But more importantly, well, at least another angle to this is once you've passed 20, you've unlocked all the weapons. And then during that sort of that phase where the game really needs to be giving you some carrots, um, you're not getting anything. You're just slowly trudging through, not really unlocking every anything other than the occasional skill point every dozen, half dozen hours. Yeah, you can go through it fairly quickly with tarot spam, I know, but it's still very slow in terms of what you're gaining. You're getting the occasional perk, which you might want, you might not, but the problem is, is you're not really going to be playing around with perks too much until you've got sort of the more toward the end game, I feel. Yeah, the perks are somewhat useful, they're kind of nice, okay, uh, but that's all you're getting. That is all you're getting, and that period of the game feels a, far too long, B, far too repetitive, and C, far too repetitive, because it needs a little bit of love. I ask myself the question, why is this bit so drawn out? I, I almost feel like, when you're done with the story, why aren't you at the end? Like, why why have that? And I, I guess the thing is, is that the war zones are going to come a certain amount of weeks after, so players have to be doing something for weeks, but... I do think if there were points of interest to keep us busy after the campaign per se, I don't see any reason why this needs to take another week or two. Let's be fair, it's more like three or four to get from there from 28 to 50. Um, now granted again, meme virus, tarot spam, you can get there, but for the players that don't know how to use meme virus appropriately, or don't get meme viruses because they're not doing the rewards, it is really slow. 
So that's problem number one. I would suggest at the bare minimum, bare minimum, after you've hit level 20, start giving those purple items a few of the relic enchants every now and again. Make it a really rare, make it really rare. I don't know, a one in 10 purples has one. Make them do half as much. Okay, 50% of your deflect value gets added to damage. It's not going to break the game's balance. The game's already unbalanced anyway. It's not going to make it any worse. But it's going to allow players that are levelling to occasionally find some shiny stuff and be like, oh, this is different. I haven't seen this before. What can I do differently with this? Rather than playing the same stuff, finding another bolt gun, another heavy plasma rifle cannon thing... You know, it's going to create some, some differences. So I think having some earlier enchants is going to help. Heck, just make relics drop more frequently at 20. That might be an idea too. Um, but I think that would help a bit. So moving on from here, what's the next thing? Again, suppression system. I know I've made a video on this and not many people would agree with me, but the suppression system ranges from completely debilitating early game, which it stops you from acting like a potato. Fair enough, I, I, kind, of, I kind of like it. Then you go into a war zone, and if you're not expecting to it, it's it's utterly destructive in terms of you have to take something to mitigate it. And then you take something to mitigate the suppression system, and you get to ignore it. So you range from having in incredible frustration at suppression to having no issues with it at all, and there's no real middle ground. So that, in my view, needs to be balanced. But more importantly, I still have the objection to the fact that you can't CC enemies at a whim um just having an enemy about to attack you visualize this an enemy charges towards heck he charges towards your friend he's about to attack him your friends are squishy he might die because it's a big attack and you're aiming at him with a weapon with several stuns what do you do absolutely sod all because the suppression system says no it's a bit like the old uh, if anyone's watched little britain computer says no basically suppression no, says no okay. you can't do that reaction ability because the suppression system says no, you haven't shot them enough for them to be stunned. I would really like, and I don't think you have to stun everything, I don't want it to become OP, but I do think it's an issue because the reactionary nature of ARPG combat is diminished because of this feature. You simply cannot make as many choices. You can stun trash, so when the game gets hard enough you can stun trash a bit, that's okay I guess, but in the key moments that are more interesting, it's not interesting because you can't do what you want to do because there's this obstacle in the way that is a never-ending suppression bar of the higher difficulties at least. So that's, again, another big issue for me. Um, now let's move on to number three and then we'll get your ideas down in the comments below. Number three for me is really just um, incentives for the game. Incentives. I'll put a... I'll put a couple of examples here. Let's take, for example, the reputation rewards, which is like there's reputation in many games, loads of reputation all over the place. But guess what happens? In most of the time, you'll see a reputation store. You'll see the items before you get access to them. You know what you're working toward and you know why. And then you get to try and unlock it. And to see a mystery tarot card or tarot, sorry, I will get it right eventually, at the end of a reputation system. A, there's a problem for me of not having any choice. B, there's a problem of not even knowing what it is. And this, this occurs in many situations within Martyrs. So first up, the reputation, I think, is not as giving as players as much incentive to grind it. I've not bothered at all. I know what some of the rewards are, but I don't want to do the same missions again and again. Again, that goes back to open world variety. But next up, if we talk about the war zone, the fact that the end game's not in the game when the game goes live, so people don't know what they're leveling for. Um, and in some ways, I feel that that's backfired a little bit. And I guess, and I understand that there's this sort of whole concept of events, but can't the war zone just be at the end of it and then we have events within the war zone? I can't help but feel when, when a leveling process is implemented and you get this absence of, of what you're aiming for that it causes problems and a, and a lack of motivation and I really do think it's something to, to consider um, as to, to what players are working towards and why. We do have a progression bar on the character now which is a lot better than what it used to be so now you can see what you're going to unlock and when but I think they need to apply that philosophy to everything. And as well as that, I do think a little bit of choice would go a, a long, long way as well. Having the store work on a unique currency like they're implementing next week with the, or this week, I don't know when, with the Warzone feature is cool. You get to grind it, you get to 
find some stuff to unlock. That's pretty cool. I think they need stuff like that all over the game. It's it's an ARPG. There's no harm in in farming some stuff for a reputation for a unique recipe that you really, really, really want. Um, granted, you've got to also improve what you're farming so it doesn't feel so monotonous, but I think having some really clear rewards for players, even some visual stuff to, to grind out from some of the sectors, a unique helmet from the Cult Mechanicus, you know, it doesn't really matter. But little things like that I do think make a big difference. And having players um, have some control over what they're working towards, I think, would also help as well. Guys, once again, I want to see down below in the comments what you think of the current situation. I mean, granted, you may just think the game is a lost cause. Granted, you, you may be one of the players that thinks, hey, it's lovely right now. Don't worry, don't worry. It's all good. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Or maybe you're somewhere in the middle. But what do you think is needed to bring this game forward? Perhaps visualize those console players in a month's time. What would have made your initial experience of this game a lot smoother? Let's see it down below, guys. Have yourself a great week, and I'll speak to you soon. Take care.